Amen. Praise the Lord. Good morning, brothers and sisters. God bless all of you. It's wonderful to be here and great to see everyone again. And to our brothers and sisters who are watching online, good morning. We welcome you into the house of the Lord. I read from Psalms 111. Praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the counsel of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are His deeds, and His righteousness endures forever. He has caused His wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food for those who fear Him, and He remembers His covenant forever. He provides food for those who fear Him, and He remembers His covenant forever. This morning, brothers and sisters, the psalmist encourages us to ponder to ponder on the works of the Lord, to meditate, to remember, to recount, to recollect the goodness of our Lord, the great works of our Lord. So as we come before Him this morning to worship Him, to turn our eyes upon Him, let's, what I call, unplug from the world and plug into God. Amen? Let's unplug from the world and just now plug into God and focus upon Him, whatever uh, worries we have, problems we have maybe this week, stress or tension, let's come and just lay it at the foot of the cross. Amen. Shall we all rise this morning and let's, let's uh, just uh, be encouraged at, by the word of the psalmist to ponder, to reflect, to meditate on the great works of our Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we pray together? Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for gathering us here this morning. Lord, we want to thank you, Father God, that this is the appointed hour and this is the appointed time for your people together to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we invite the presence and the power of your Holy Spirit right now to come and move even within our midst. Move in the homes of our brothers and sisters who are watching. Touch them, Father God. Touch us, Lord. We desire for you to come, Lord. We desire for you to come, Lord, to minister to us, to speak to us as we offer up our praises and our worship and adoration for you. Father, we just want to commit to you, Lord, our worship and praise that it will be a sweet aroma to your nostrils. We pray that you bless every other service that's going to be running this Sunday. The Chinese ministry, the dialect ministry, all other ministries that is running. Father, we commit into your hands, O God. And we pray, Father God, that you release your special blessing upon Pastor Derek Hong who will be ministered ministering to us this morning. Lord, release your special anointing on him, O oh God. Grant him a word that would be so relevant to our hearts, that would speak to us in our innermost being and that would direct us according to your plans and purpose for your church, for your house and for our lives. We want to give you all the glory and praise. In Jesus' name we pray and all God's people say, Amen. Give the Lord a wonderful hand, please. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, good morning. You know, it's so glad. I'm so glad to see all of you online and also on site. You know, I see more faces this morning. You know, why don't you, before we start the praise and worship, why don't you just turn to the people around you, give them a, a fist bump, you know, and just welcome each other into the house of the Lord. You know, it's so glad, so good to have you here with us. And praise the great God. So let's put hands together and let's praise Him. Here we are to praise You. Here we are to worship You. We have come to magnify Your name. With our voice we exalt You. We lift our hands to adore You. We declare forever You will reign. Let your name be known, let your name be worshipped, let your name be high and lifted up. At your name, demons will tremble, at your name, sickness is healed, at your name, struggles are broken, Jesus your name, the power of your name. Here we are to worship you We have 
have come to magnify your name. With our voice we exalt you, we lift our hands to adore you, we declare forever you will reign. Let your name be known, let your name be worshipped. just lift up your hands and we declare the greatness of our God. We declare that He is the Lord. You know, He reigns, He rules in majesty, but He moves also in mercy. We exalt you, Jesus. We bless your name. You reign in power. still at your name giants would tumble Jesus you reign you are the Lord of all oh Jesus you reign you are the Lord of all oh Jesus you reign you are the Lord of all here in this place. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand, when everything around me is shaking. I've 
never been more glad I put my faith in Jesus He's never let me down He's faithful true generations So why would He fail now? He won't Oh, you know, church, this song has been a song that has seen me through the past two months, three months. And this morning, I just want to introduce this song to you and hope that you will together with me declare that God is our firm foundation, that He's greater, He's in control, that in every season that we are in, that He's with us. So let us lift our eyes towards Him Let's lift our hands towards Him and know that He is here with us and He's worthy. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of adoration. He's worthy of our devotion. Let nothing, let nothing stop us from lifting up His name. So Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. And everything around me shaking I've never been more glad I put my faith in Jesus He's never let me down His faithful true generations So why would He feel now? Joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense. I won't be going under. I'm not held by my own strength. I build my life on Jesus. He's never let me down. He's faithful in every season. just want to pray maybe as we sing the song God we just want to surrender every issue, every problem every mountain, every difficulty or every anxiety that we have at home, at work in our nation, in the world right now but God we want to declare that you are our firm foundation. That as we choose to be rooted in Jesus, that we will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. That our focus will always be on you. That our hope is always in you. And we ask, Lord, let faith arise. Let faith arise. Rain 
came when you blew. My house was built on you. God is faithful that our God see us through every season and though it may be difficult it may be tough but there'll be a day when we look back and we recognize that his hands his footprints were always there for us that he has always been journeying with us and we can only declare that we are able because he is our strength So today, when, when there are things that may distract you or of who you are with, let's recognize that God is the one that we ought to run to. 
that in Him we have that victory. In Him, He's a God who hears our prayers. As it's Him that will deliver us, that will protect us, that will defend us. So let's continue to build our house, our lives upon Him. And may He be our firm foundation.
every victory let it be said of me my source of strength my source of hope in Christ alone I place my trust and find my glory in the power of the strengthen hearts you will encourage hearts this morning even as we choose to look towards you that you are a God who goes before us a God who is with us a God who fights for us so our faith and our trust is in you and Lord we just want to glorify and magnify such a wonderful such a mighty God this morning in Jesus name and all God's people say Amen. Come on, let's give God a mighty praise, shall we? Hallelujah. Please be seated.
Hi, very good morning to all of you and welcome to our on-site service at Bethesda Cathedral. It's good to see so many of you on-site and welcome to the folks that are online with, with us as well. Uh, this morning, we're very happy to uh, let you know more about the Alpha program. Last week, we introduced uh, Alpha. It's something that the Lord told Pastor sometime last year to, to launch so that we can reach out to our Judea, Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. We're talking about family, friends and Chai Chi. We do want to win souls before Christ comes and this is our golden opportunity to do so. It's not to force the gospel down everybody's throat, but it's to share it in a gentle way. Let them ask any questions that they want to ask and let the Holy Spirit convict them to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. So to tell you more about this, I'd like to invite Sister Audra to come up. Would you put your hands together and just give us some encouragement? One of the powerful things about doing Alpha is that you do it uh, through friendships and relationships and also through showing uh, your love in a way that is sacrificial because facilitators have to give so much of their time and yet really gain nothing out of it. And people cannot believe that this uh, sort of love exists. I was briefly on the uh, Alpha Singapore board with uh, Andy Lim. Andy had this idea of introducing Alpha to uh, chairman and CEO. So we, we started to do these lunches, these Alpha lunches, and we did it during the workday. For me personally, it was an experience because when we first started, there were about uh, eight facilitators and only about six or seven uh, pre-believers. So I said, hey, can't be right, it's not very efficient. Being from business, right, we think about efficiency a lot. I learned something from this because uh, there were eight facilitators, there were six or seven, but all of them came to the Lord, finally, at the end of the Alpha course. That was amazing. We, we stepped out as a Christian enterprise, I think in 2015. There are some apprehensions of bringing the gospel to the workplace. But I think the great thing about this journey and by really by the grace of God is that having come out as a Christian enterprise, to say that we are a Christian enterprise, we are at liberty to, to bring the gospel. I have no qualms about sharing the gospel now. to evangelize to pre-believers uh, in an open, non-judgmental and unthreatening way. Okay? Philip Ng spoke about why we should run Alpha. But maybe we ask ourselves, 
why join Alpha? And we will explore this by maybe answering, uh, asking a few ifs. If you are seeking to build relationships or are currently not part of any care group, then I say come and join Alpha. If you would like to learn and be part of a ministry to help bring pre-believers to Christ, then come and join Alpha. If you have no idea how to evangelize but want to be part of that great commission, then come and join Alpha. If you have friends, colleagues, family, loved ones that currently still do not know Christ but you have the heart to want to bring them to Christ, then I say come and join Alpha. Alpha is for everyone. There is a part for everyone to play. And if you still have no idea of what Alpha is all about or or you're just curious to know what it is about because you've heard so much about it, then I say come and join Alpha. Whether you are a mature or seasoned Christian or someone you know, who um, struggles to speak of Christ to others, uh, all it takes is really a heart that wants um, to be used for Christ's glory. So I kind of encourage everyone to come, to see, to experience for yourself uh, what Alpha is about. So our first run will be on the 24th on Thursdays as well as on Friday. So there are two different groups. One is on Thursday. It is run by Dawn. Dawn is a facilitator. Uh, it's under Christine Chong's uh, care group. Uh, it will run on Thursdays, every Thursday from the 24th of March. And then the second one will be on Weiwen's group. I will be facilitating. It starts on the 25th of March and it starts a slightly later time because it caters to many of the working adults. It will start at 8.30 and will end by 10. So if any of you are interested, please come uh, find out more from either Dawn or myself uh, or you can just contact the church office at 46444-5891 and you can speak to Dawn. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Audra. I want to assure all of you that even as the two groups did their practice runs, that the people attending were very excited about the way it's being run and they really thoroughly enjoyed themselves. So come, there's no threat at all. Just come and be part of the Alpha program. That's a desire in the heart of God and we want to be able to be part of that work that God has called us to do as a church, to reach out to others and to not only win them, but to disciple them into spiritual maturity so that we will all rejoice in heaven when we finally get there. Yes? All right. Okay, uh, now the seniors have been meeting uh, online every Friday for, I don't know, years I think now. And we have a great time of fun and fellowship. If you have not been part of the seniors program, I really encourage you, if you do have the time, to come and join us. This uh, coming Friday, we're very happy to have uh, Elder Caleb to share with us on Strengthen Yourself in the Lord. Uh, this is one of the components of the program. If you're interested to know what it is, we have uh, a time of games, fun, playing together. We also have exercises. Uh, many of us uh, really need to get ourselves uh, going because uh, life is quite sedentary in this COVID period and uh, we do have the Word of God every Friday. So do come and join us and this Friday, make a special effort to come. Elder Caleb will be sharing the Word of God. Okay, now we will take our tithes and our offerings. Father, we thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. We thank you also, Father, that all good things come from you. We want to thank you, Father, for blessing us. We want to thank you for providing for us. And Lord, even as you have blessed us, we want to be part, Lord, of the extension of your kingdom by giving back unto you. Lord, we pray that for everything that we give unto you, that you are blessed, prosper it, and use it for your purposes. We thank you, we praise you, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
Last Sunday, I was thoroughly blessed by the message that was spoken by Pastor Derek Hong. Uh, he's the senior pastor of Good Gifts Church. And we're very happy that he's here with us once again. And I want to invite you now to put your hands together and welcome Pastor Derek Hong. Well, thank you once again for the privilege of being with you. Uh, I really just sense God's presence this morning as we worship Him. You know, the, those songs uh, selected by Pastor Jonathan has really been uplifting. And, uh, you know, I, I, I resonate with the melodies and the lyrics, and I trust all of you have been thoroughly refreshed and strengthened uh, as you worship Him. Praise God. Let's uh, open this time with a word of prayer. Let's allow the, the presence of the Lord and the, the love of God uh, to come and once again ref, uh, minister to our spirit. You know, many of us come from situations where we understand that this has been a tough time for everyone. So, you know, everywhere I go, people are telling me, you know, so and so have caught, uh, caught COVID, the down, and other. Thankfully, uh, this, this uh, variant yeah, is quite harmless. To me, it's just like an, an, another flu, another flu epidemic, you know. Actually, um, my wife is a nurse, so, you know, we do talk about some of these things. And um, every year, right, there, there actually a lot of people suffer from flus during certain seasons all over the world. And sometimes friends tell you, oh, you're traveling, you better get your uh, jabs and all that, anti-flu jabs and all that. I never take them, okay? But it is very common that every year people get flus, all kinds of, of uh, you know, influenza, all kinds of uh, the, the viruses that affect people, especially when their immune system is down and all that. So I, I'm actually seeing this as a... As, just another flu thing, okay? So I want to encourage all of you, don't be frightened by this virus. Actually, our fear actually is worse than the disease itself, okay? God wants us to, have, the spirit is given to us is a spirit of love, power, and sound mind, not a spirit of fear. So if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you're filled with the Holy Spirit, speak in tongues. By the way, do you know that studies have shown that when you speak in tongues, your immune system is enhanced. The health benefits in speaking in tongues. So, speak in tongues, okay? If you're, if you're not yet baptized in the Spirit, you have not received this anointing, this freedom to speak in tongues, get people to pray for you. Yeah? Go to your cell groups, go to your elders and your pastors to pray and seek the Lord so that you will be strengthened in the Spirit which then overflow to the rest uh, of your being, your emotions, your, your, your body, yeah, your finances, your relationships. When you pray in tongues, amazing things happen. That's why Paul says, I wish I would, in, in 1 Corinthians 14, yeah, I would that you all speak in tongues. And when he said that, he's not just like a, he's not just making a request. The words there, if I have an opportunity you know, to, to expound that, the word there, I would that you speak in tongues in 1 Corinthians 14, is the word that is used by a boss to his employee. Yeah, if tomorrow you go to work, your boss says, I would like to have this report by next week. It's not a request. Huh? It's an order. And Paul was an apostle. He founded the church. So when he said, I would like you to, it's not a request. So you were looking for a command to speak in tongues, right there, you have it. Okay? So sometimes uh, my more conservative friends don't like this. But it's right there in the Word of God. We must be men and women of the Word. What does the Word say about this situation? What does the Word say about my life? What does the Word say the way I'm dealing with certain situations? Keep coming back to the Word. The Holy Spirit will bring you to the Word. If you really feel the Holy Spirit, you will always come back to the Word. 
So today, this morning, yeah, as we open the Word of God, let's come under the authority of the Holy Spirit through His Word. Will you pray with me? Let's humble ourselves before the Lord. Father, we thank you for this time of worship. We thank you for the refreshing touch of your presence as we come before you in humility. Lord, I just pray that you will just descend upon us in a fresh and a new way. Lord, this is a great church. You have raised this, this, this ministry up, Lord, through Pastor Tay uh, for so many years. Been such in, it, it exerted such influence in the body of Christ here in Singapore and beyond. I just pray right now that as we celebrate together your goodness, as we come under the sound of your word, may our hearts, Lord, be humble before you. May those things that need changing in our lives, Lord, be brought to the surface and that we will be willing to obey. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we all say, Amen. Let's open the scriptures and read together from Luke chapter 10. Okay, Luke chapter 10 and verse 30 to verse 35. And once again, I want to encourage you, every time you see scripture on the screen, declare it aloud. And those of you who are at home or wherever you are with your devices, yeah, and if you're even in public, it's okay. Yeah? Speak the word of God aloud, maybe not too loudly so that you don't uh, uh, attract too much attention, but declare the word of God. The atmosphere, the environment is filled with sounds, and a lot of those sounds, a lot of those, that noise is, uh, un is unhealthy, okay? They're full of junk out there, full of lies, full of fake news, right? And so we need to speak God's word out. So are you ready? Let's do that. Huh? Let, let me hear your voice as we declare the word of God together. This is a familiar passage of scripture. Let's go. Jesus replied with a story. A Jewish man was travelling from Jerusalem down to Jericho and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along, but when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn, where he took care of him. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, Take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm here. Last week, I shared with you about overcoming the storms of life. And I talked about why, how I had the privilege of studying in Israel. So some of these places that uh, you find in the scriptures, uh, I had the privilege of visiting. And this road that's talked about here in this uh, story of Jesus, yeah, the road from Jerusalem to Jericho, uh, it's called the Jericho Road. Okay? And uh, it's actually a mountainous or hilly area. Uh, Jerusalem, okay, uh, Jericho and Jerusalem are, are, are far apart of maybe... Um, uh, 24, about uh, 24 kilometers. It's a long road, okay? And it, is a, it, it goes down from Jerusalem down to Jericho. And it's a descent of about 3,200 feet or 970 over meters. So as you can see from this photograph, right, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a place where it's easy for robbers to hide and ambush travelers. In those days, unlike today, okay, and even, uh, okay, even today, in some places, it's very unsafe to travel, right? And if some countries, uh, people warn you, yeah, be careful, yeah, even people stop you. I know that in some countries, even in traffic lights, people get robbed, get mugged, get shot. You know, I, I've been to some of these countries. Very, very dangerous, even today. But how much more in the days of Jesus? Yeah, bandits 
Rome, all over the place. Even uh, in the year 1860, there were reports of people being attacked on this road. So we had the privilege of travelling on this road just to experience what Jesus taught. So this, this so-called uh, story of the Good Samaritan is not a parable, although Jesus uses it, but it is something that is very real. So if there has been a media or newspaper, you know, you, every now and then you will hear of people getting ambushed on this road. Yeah? So newspapers and everybody knows it happens regularly. So Jesus used everyday events to reveal God's kingdom on earth. And they're called parables because they are earthly stories about heavenly realities. He's showing us that life is like a journey on this Jericho road. And on this road, there are robbers. People are robbed, beaten, and left half dead. So I want to talk to you about overcoming the robbers of life. From my perspective and experience and observation, there are three kinds of robbers. Three kinds of robbers. The first are spiritual robbers. And they are Satan and evil spirits. Okay, Jesus talked about it. Uh, in, uh, or the Bible talks about it in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. Read with me. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Brothers and sisters, never forget that we have a real enemy an unseen enemy who's constantly at work. The Bible reveals that there is a spiritual realm which is just as if not more real than the physical world. This world is not visible to the human eye. It's not a flesh and blood. This world is dark and populated by evil spiritual beings, supernatural beings that has power over people if we allow them. And at the top of his hierarchy, hierarchy is Satan. And Jesus says the devil's primary goal is to destroy people in hell. He's here to destroy people in hell. If you can't do that, if you can't do that, that he says, Jesus says the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. That's about Satan. All right? So the, the first goal of Satan is to destroy people in hell. If he can't do that, he'll come to kill. He fails that, he will steal from us all the blessings, truths, anointings, and the assignments of God. That's what the devil wants to do. Okay? Our health our peace, our relationships is after all of that. You know, years ago, I received a phone call. I don't even know how people know of me. And uh, I was asked to actually come to minister to somebody who actually lived in this area, the Bedok area. And uh, when I arrived, I went to his house and it was like a temple. And this man started sharing with me about his life. Uh, his name is, uh, uh, I'll just give you the initial KB, okay, is his name. And he said to me, he told me his story, very interesting. He said that uh, when he was young, he was involved in a gang, okay, not much education, so he was in a gang, and they were, he was involved in a gang fight where some people were killed. And as a result of that, the ISD came after him, right? And they wanted to uh, lock him up and throw the key away. But he ran away to Thailand. And he went and hid in a Buddhist monastery. 
And he began to learn from the monks there how to practice some kind of uh, fortune telling and witchcraft. And how they do this is very interesting. He told me that every morning at about 4 a.m., they, they will wake up and they will go into the forest and they will sit under a tree and they will meditate uh, with a joystick in front of him. He will meditate until that joystick burns out. And he said that after a few months of that, he can tell you everything about you by the sound of your footsteps. So after a, a, a while, I don't know how long he was there for, he came back to Singapore and opened his house to be a shrine and started telling fortunes. And people would start coming to him. Right? Then he produced boxes of... Uh, photographs, you no know, passport size photographs of young men and young women who, would, who brought these photos. So people will bring these photos because they are in love with someone. Yeah? So ask him to put charms on them so that they would reciprocate their affection. And he, apparently, he was very successful. He got boxes, you know, those, um, uh, those biscuit tins, you know, they're big, right? Packed with all the full of these photographs, little photographs, some of these, all young people, yeah? And they were, and he was successful, and he said, I made a lot of money out of that. But yet, at the same time, he says, um, look at me, you know, I live in a small house, I don't have uh, uh, enough money. You know, easy come, easy go, so to speak. So I said, why, why, do, you, why do you want to see me? He said, Pastor, I have to tell you this, okay, I, I speak to me in, I, in Cantonese, okay, I'm Cantonese, so we're kind of able to communicate a little bit. And he told me that although I made a lot of money, I can't keep my money, okay, and I'm still poor. Then on top of that, he says that when I do all these things, I not only do this, I also heal people, he says. When I do all these things, I suffer, I suffer. He said, I have very bad health. And he was very sickly, okay? He says, I always get sick and I'm, I, I have very bad health. My family relationships are not good. You know, I can't get along with my wife, my children. And they were all kind of sitting around uh, listening to our conversation. So I said, why do you call me? He said, I don't know. Somebody recommended <laughs> you to come to me. So I said, okay, I can't help you. But there's only one person who can. His name is Jesus Christ. So, would you accept him? He said, yes. Then he told me a lot more things. He said, I, I said, why, why do you want to change? Why do you want to give up? He says, yeah, I, I, I can't keep my money. I keep on getting sick. And, and then he told me some stories of how he often suffer. He said that um, sometimes when the patients, he, uh, these patients come to him, he told me one very uh, scary story. He said that there was this man who came into his house and then the, sat in front of him, and he had boils all over his body, okay? So he asked uh, uh, KB to treat him, and then as he sat down, they went into a trance, okay? KB went into a trance. And then when he came out of the trance, the guy was gone. His patient was not there. About half an hour later, this guy came back and carried two packets, two uh, paper bags full of eggs, and then he sat down again and started putting the eggs on the floor. And as he do that, KB went into a trance again. Okay, about a while later, he got out of his trance and this guy was sitting in front of him, smiling, and all the eggs were gone. So he said, what happened? He said, you don't know. When I first came in, okay, when I sat down and I told you my problem, you went into a trance and a voice came out of you telling me to go out and buy and bring back 50 eggs. So I went and I brought back the 50 eggs. Then when I sat down with you again, you went into a trance. As I lay out the eggs again, you went into a trance and you became like a snake. And you started to swallow the eggs one by one with shell and all. And after that, you crawl up my body and with your mouth start sucking all the pus and the poison from my boils. You see, I am better now. 
And when KB heard that, he felt this, 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 this churning in his stomach. He ran into his bathroom and started vomiting. And shells became to come out, come out of his mouth. Shells. And for the next few weeks, his mouth was full of ulcers because of the poison that he had swallowed. He said, Pastor, I can't take this anymore. I'm always in pain. I'm always suffering. So he said, so I said, what, what have you tried to do besides this? He said, uh, besides, you know, wanting one help from somebody like me. He said, sometimes I, I get very angry with all these spirits. And one time he says, I was uh, so fed up, so sick and tired of my life. And I, I, he said, I scolded one of the spirits. And I was having a drink of water. And as I said those words, my hand, the spirit came upon me and my hand crushed the glass. And I started shoving the glass shards into my mouth. He stuck out his tongue and showed me his scars. So when I said to him, then I said, only Jesus can help you. So will you receive Jesus? He says, yes, I need all the help I can get. He's desperate. So when I tried to lead him in praying what's called a sinner's prayer to receive Jesus, when he came to the word Jesus, he cannot speak. He cannot utter the name of Jesus. And he became like a snake, threw himself on the floor and started writhing. So I say, in Jesus' name, I command this snake to go from him. And he flung himself out of the door. The snake ran out from him. And then he came back. And I started praying again. And he started levitating. He flew up into the sky, literally jumped up, in, on the, uh, the, uh, the, almost hit the ceiling, and then came down in a lotus position like a piece of stone pow, on the floor. I've never seen anything like that before. I was scared, okay? I can tell you I was scared. There are a lot of other things I can tell you about that, that, that uh, ministry. Okay. Praise the Lord. Okay. He accepted Christ. His whole family came to the Lord and started going to church. And, and you know, it took a long time to continue to minister to him. You know, these, are, these spiritual robbers, they bring disease. They bring hell on earth. They are terrifying robbers. That's the first kind of robbers you and I face. And if you ever have those kind of experience, come to Jesus. If you've ever gone to some of these places where you look for help, there are residue of these things. They're like hooks into your, into your spirit, into your emotions, and will keep pulling you back even when you try to turn to Jesus. So it's a war. It talks about here, right? It's a, it's a fight. It's a war against flesh. And we must never forget that this, this is the worst enemy of humankind. The first kind of robber, spiritual robbers. The second kind of robber are people. You and me. You know, you heard of the cartoon called Peanuts, right? And there's a little girl there by the name of Linus. Yeah. Uh, no, not a girl. I think Linus is, the, is, is one of the, the cute little boys there. He says, I love mankind, but it's people I can't stand. How many of you think like that? How many of you feel like that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, I love everybody, but I can't stand the fellow sitting next to me. <laughs> I can't stand the fella in my office sitting across me. And uh, believe it or not, another person who said this, okay, is Albert Einstein. He also said this, I love humanity. It's people I can't stand. And we all know, right? We have people who make life very hard for all of us. You know, human beings... Human beings do the most terrible things to each other. In creation, animals kill for food. 
because they need to eat. In the world of human beings, we kill sometimes for fun. And we kill for pleasure. The worst atrocities on earth are committed by man to fellow man. People exploit people. People use people. People abuse people. Even amongst close relations, yeah, we can think of the most hurtful words to say to one another. How do, how do families break up? How does, how does marriages end up in divorce? Right? When you get married, you never think about divorce. And if anybody suggests that to you, you probably murder them, right? <laughs> break their neck or something. But how is it that down the years, men and women cannot stand each other? Because, believe it or not, the very people we're supposed to honour and love and care for, we can think of the harshest and hardest words to say, to hurt. Because we know what hurts them. Right? I know what, 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 what I can say to hurt my wife. And she can do that too to me. And we can, we can really damage each other. People do that to us, and we do that to others. And let me say this to you. In the history of religion, some of the worst atrocities are committed in the name of God. And as a pastor of many years, I tell you this, I often have to ask people for forgiveness. Not just for my own failures in my relationships and leadership over people, but for people who bring their suffering, their sense of betrayal, their, their, their sense of being abused, by their church leaders, elders, sometimes senior pastors too. I often have to say, I'm so sorry this has happened to you. And I stand in identification, repentance for what the church has done to you. I'm so ashamed. I'm part of this. Will you forgive me? Will you forgive us? Even in Christian circles, horrible things are done to each other. And we're supposed to be a people of love. So that's the second kind of robber on this road of life. The third kind of robber is self, ourselves. Read together with me, Romans chapter 7, verse 15. I don't really understand myself. For what I want to do, what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. So even the Apostle Paul experienced this struggle. He struggles. A famous preacher said this, Beware of no man more than yourself. You know, sometimes we are more wary of other people. What would they do to us? <laughs> Spurgeon says, your worst enemy is within you. Okay, we are our own worst enemies. People knowingly do things to hurt themselves. It's strange, right? Especially today, young people. Yeah? Excessive drinking, smoking, drug abuse, eating junk food. If the young people here, let me say to you, stop drinking soft drinks, they're poison. Right? Stop taking white sugar, it's poison. Self-harm. There's a spirit of suicide and death that stalks people. I had the privilege of preaching in another church some time ago. And on that day, a young couple came into the church. And at the end of the service, they came out for ministry. And they told me that the, the man's father... This young couple's, uh, the, of the, the man of this young couple's father attempted suicide. And then the sister 
also attempted suicide. This, the whole family well, was, was like plagued with this spirit of death. And then the pastor's own niece, in that week, okay, that week, it was, it was really timely, from a top junior college, studying to be a doctor, committed suicide. And at the funeral, the pastor who invited me, my host pastor, met the school's head of sports. So he started to tell this uh, teacher about this spirit of death that was stalking our young people. And of course, being a non-Christian, he poo-pooed it. A few weeks later, the captain of the athletics team in the college, reading the blog of the niece who's committed suicide, jumped. I tell you, that pain that the family was going through, the robbers of life leave people stripped broken and dying. All of us are victims, some worse off than others. And Jesus said, two persons pass by this victim on the road of Jericho. One of them was a priest. The other what's called temple assistant or Levite, was there. These people represented religion. They're supposed to be spiritual people. And by religion, I mean a system of beliefs that seek earthly well-being and eternal security through keeping rules and performing external rituals. These two religious people saw the victim of the robbers lying there, and what did they do? In the pool of blood, they crossed the road and passed quickly by. What is God telling us about this? Is that religion doesn't help. Religion cannot help rob, uh, victims of the robbers of life when they're overwhelmed by them. And then, Jesus says there's a third person who appeared. You know, one of these things I encourage people to read the Bible, okay? As you read these stories of Jesus, this is, this is the, 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 the Hebrew way of reading the Bible. The rabbis teach people to read it. When you read these stories from the Bible, imagine yourself in the story and then ask yourself, who are you in this story? Who are you? Who would you like to be in this story? So, first of all, we have identified ourselves as the victims. Now, you see people, right? Two guys who came and walked by, and then this third person, Jesus says, is a Samaritan. Now, a Samaritan in biblical uh, uh, history was a despised person. In fact, uh, Luke mentioned that. He's despised in the eyes of the Jews. They were like a, a, a kind of an outcast. They are religiously unclean. They got mixed up in, both racially and religiously. Therefore, they despised them. But it was this despised man that came to the assistance of the victim. Unlike the other two, right? He stopped and came to the aid of the poor person. Now, you must understand, okay? The Samaritan took a huge risk to help this victim. Remember, the bandits, they can still be around, right? You have a man there lying there, other people come and help, another victim. Perhaps this is also why the other two didn't hang around. So religious people can be cowards. They don't face reality. So I submit to you that this person who attended to the victim, this Samaritan, represents our Lord Jesus Christ. I can say this because Jesus was despised by the Jews, by his own people, rejected by many people. And secondly, he took a huge risk to come into this world. Right? He came as a baby. There were attempts on his life from the time he was born to the time he started his ministry. And thirdly, 
It's because of the things that Jesus did for this victim of the robbers of life. What did Jesus do? We read there that as he represented by, represented by the Samaritan, first of all, he had compassion for the victim. He saw the victim. He had compassion. The first thing that God requires of us when we see a situation is compassion. Every time Jesus sees a crowd, he was filled with compassion. You know, I, I as a pastor, sometimes I see a crowd, I become proud. But when G, every time Jesus sees a crowd, compassion rises up within him. Psalm 145, verse 8, read together, The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. Then secondly, he went to the victim. He didn't just have compassion. He went and do something for him. He took the initiative. Last week, I talked about God being the God of initiative. He doesn't wait for us sometimes even to call upon him. He came to the victim. In, in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15, let's say together, this is a trustworthy saying and everyone should accept it. Jesus Christ came into this world to save sinners. He didn't wait for us to, to call out to him. He came to us while we are wallowing in our pain and our suffering and our sin and our state of being a victim in this world. Jesus came, came to us. Right now, if you have been a victim of the robbers of life, Jesus is coming to you, wherever you are. Thirdly, he bandaged his wounds. That means he brings healing. Jesus Christ is a healer. Hallelujah. I shared with you my uh, testimony, how uh, he saw me through you know, my, my primary six uh, season when I was in. I, what I uh, didn't have time to talk about was not only did, was I able to do well in those exams after six months in hospital, he began to heal my body. Right? I went to secondary school, this premier school, I, built, I, I, I participated in sports like, like I'm never uh, to catch up on lost time because when I was uh, growing up, I was very sickly, right? I had pneumonia and then I had TB. I was very sickly. I was a very weakly, uh, weak, weakling kind of a kid. But when I started secondary school, I played contact sports. I did judo. I played rugby. And this school was strong in rugby, okay? I got into the junior team, was even selected for district level. And then they started training on Sunday. I, I have to stop. Okay, I, I, swam, I, I swam for the, my house, I did, played basketball, you name it, I've done it to catch up. <laughs> Jesus is a healer. And even if you have been a victim, right now, Jesus is coming to bandage you up and bring healing to your body and your soul. Hallelujah. Then he, we read that he poured on oil. Oil is always a symbol in the Bible for the Wonderful Holy Spirit. He wants to pour His Spirit upon you. Just think about it. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. You know, this, this, this medium that I share with you about, you know, He has all kinds of spirits in Him. But what God wants, the Creator of the universe, is to put His own Spirit into you and me. What an incredible privilege. We become temples yeah, not the shrine that people have to come to, but we carry the presence of God wherever we go. And wherever we go, people relate to us, they should encounter the Holy Spirit. He poured on oil. And number five, he poured on wine. <laughs> and we know whenever the Bible talks about wine, it makes people happy. <laughs> Joy, right? If you drink a little bit of wine, you talk a lot more. The joy, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And this joy is not based on circumstances. Uh, you can, just now, one of the songs that Pastor Jonathan led us in was, I'm glad. Uh, even when the wind is blowing, when the storm is coming, I can be glad. In fact, uh, last week when I talked about uh, uh, overcoming the storms, Peter 
has to step out of the boat and get into the middle of the storm to overcome the storm, uh, to have the miracle. You've got to face your storms. You cannot run away from your storms. You've got to walk right into it. And then Jesus will be there, hold you up, and you'll ride with Jesus on those waves. Joy. Power of the Holy Spirit. And then finally, he put the victim on a donkey. I like to see this donkey representing pastors and church workers. <laughs> right? Uh, we are donkeys for Jesus. And we carry broken people into the inn, which represent to be the church. That's what pastors do. Right? We're shepherds. We carry the broken people. We can't do much for them except to bring them into the presence of God. Bring them into the house of God. Bring them into the community which is supposed to be filled with compassion and love. And welcome for broken people. And then, in the process, bring healing like Jesus did. Yeah? So bring joy. Bring restoration. We invest in the victims on the journey of life. Today, the Good Samaritan, our Lord Jesus Christ, wants to do this for all the victims of the robbers. He's here to deliver you from the power of evil spirits. He wants to heal injuries caused by others. And by yourself, through your neglect, through your ignorance, through your willfulness, he wants to transform you. He wants to bring you to his inn. This church, or other churches that may be near your home, if you're new or online, the community where you can receive ongoing care and restoration. Now in short, he wants to transform you from being a victim to being a victor. So everybody say, from victim to victor. Can I hear you say that? From victim to victor. Turn to your neighbor and say, from victim to victor. In Jesus' name. Will you reach out to him? Right now, he's seeing all of us lying on the road, broken, battered. People walk by and they don't even turn an eye. But Jesus is here. He's coming to you right now, wherever you are. Let us pray. Let's take a moment to reflect maybe in the last few weeks or few months of our lives. First of all, have you been a victim? Or do you felt like being a victim? Perceived or real, doesn't matter. Sometimes we may think we are being victimized and maybe just our own sense of insecurity or lack of sense of self-worth. If you are, come to the Lord. Say, Lord, I, I sometimes feel like a victim. People around me who are supposed to love me, care for me, sometimes it comes from the most unexpected quarters. And have you ever been ever engage in occultic practices of any kind? You need to come to the Lord for deliverance. Don't let evil spirits of any kind have a hold on you. 
Look for help if you struggle in that area. And then, have you been a source of harm to others? Have you been a robber? Not just having been robbed, but have you been a robber of someone else's life? Have you taken advantage of a situation to get what you want rather than move by principle and godly wisdom and humility and by the truth of God's word? And in the process, harming and even destroying others. Are you a robber? And then finally, have you been harming yourself through a lifestyle that is indifferent to health. And when you harm yourself, it's not just yourself, it's your family who may be affected. Friends around you will be affected. The glory of God will be affected. The testimony will be affected. When you do silly things, irresponsible behavior, Let's come against these robbers within ourselves. And those who come against us in a demonic realm. I want you to take a few minutes to just allow the Holy Spirit to surface those realities. And come in humility before the Lord. So in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I speak blessing over God's people right now. The blessing that truth will set people free. Compassion will rule. Grace will reign. And the good Samaritan, the spirit of the good Samaritan will arise in this place. In the mighty name of Jesus. Receive, receive the, the ministry of the good Samaritan. Personally, family, as a family, as a church, as you try to reach out to pre believers through Alpha, this spirit is fundamental. This willingness to risk your own comfort. Give of your substance. To reach out to the broken. Lord, I thank you for what you want, what you want to do in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Your will cannot be thwarted. So I speak peace into this house. I speak grace into our hearts. I speak again the sovereignty and the authority of the Word of God back into our lives. That we will go from here, from being victim to functioning like victors alongside the Good Samaritan. 
In Jesus' name, we all say, Amen. Wherever you are seated, will you just lift up your hands to God first? And we'll sing this to Him. So rain down on me. Rain down on me. Here in your presence, I am free. You pour down like rain. Come touch me again. Lord, let your presence fall on me. You rain down on me. You rain down on me. Here in your presence, I am free. Lord. You pour down like rain. Come touch me again. Lord, let your presence fall on me. Rain down, rain down on me. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. now 
will soar with you. The Spirit leads me on by the power of your love. Lord, I'm feeling deliver and he will come and save you know he's a God as we draw near he draws near to us you know as we pray and we crowd you know his his ears are not are not deaf his hands are not too short but he will answer our prayers and he will come near and even as as you feel like you've been robbed and even as you feel like you're lying there and you're helpless you know God can you will always be near when you reach out to him when you reach out to Him, He comes near and He pours out His very character and who He is upon us that we can rise up once again to be the man, the woman that God has called us to be. So there is, there is no shame, there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus, but there is always freedom, there is always healing, there is always liberty. So even as we close this service one more time, let's make this cry to God, hold me close. Hold me close Let your love surround me You bring me near You draw me to your side And of like the eagle and I will soar with you your spirit leads me on and I will soar with you your spirit leads me on and I will soar with you your spirit leads me on and I will soar with the Spirit leads me on, and I will soar with you. Your 
Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the sweet fellowship of God the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you, church. So great to see you. Join us next week for our service once again. <laughs>